Most of us grow up thinking that the bond between infant and mother is a very tight sharing of interests. However, in fact, if we look at it from the point of view of the genes that are in the mother and in the offspring, we see that there is a strong potential for evolutionary conflict. That has medical consequences, and so I would like to start this by talking about the evolutionary theory behind parent-offspring conflict. We owe that to Bill Hamilton, who came up with the idea of kin selection, to Bob Trivers, who saw that that had implications for parent-offspring conflict, and to David Haig, who saw that parent-offspring and mother-father conflict both will have influence on the course of pregnancy. So the basic idea of kin selection comes from Bill Hamilton, here photographed on the Amazon River, a British evolutionary geneticist. Bill saw that what matters in evolution is not individual survival, but the increase in frequency of the genes that are carried by an individual. That's a, an insight he got from Fisher and Haldane and others. It therefore pays an individual to sacrifice itself if more copies of that individual's genes get into the next generation than if that individual did not sacrifice itself. So there can be a conflict between genetic interest and individual survival. The costs and benefits of acts are weighed against each other in genetic currency. And genes exist not only in the individual, but also in its relatives. Therefore, if an individual can help its relatives to survive and reproduce, and if the increase in the number of its genes in the next generation through offspring of relatives is greater than the decrease through its own offspring as a consequence of that act, then helping behavior will be selected. Now, how do we calculate genetic costs and benefits? Well, if we let B equal benefit, that would be the increase in the recipient's fitness as, a, as the result of an act. C, the cost, would be the decrease in the donor's fitness as the result of an act. R is the coefficient of relationship, which is the probability that a gene in the donor and a gene in the recipient are identical by descent from a common ancestor. Given that, the condition for helping is that B divided by C is greater than 1 divided by R, or that B times R is greater than C times 1, or to put it into English, the increase in the relative's fitness as a result of the act times the relationship to the relative, so that's B times R, is greater than the decrease in the donor's fitness as a result of the act times its relationship to itself. Its relationship to itself is 1. So some of the kinds of traits that are proposed as instances of kin-selected, quote, altruism, of acting to save others at a cost to yourself, include alarm calls in birds, ground squirrels, and primates, guarding behavior and vigilance, helping at the nest in birds, suppressed reproduction, which we see in bees and wasps and ants, in social carnivores, like meerkats, wild dogs, dwarf mongooses and hyenas, and naked mole rats. Here we see some meerkats confronting a cobra. They have both suppressed reproduction with one female reproducing and the rest helping, and they have guarding behavior and vigilance. Now there are, are alternative explanations for some of these behaviors, but these are the kinds of things that behavioral ecologists explain as kin selected. Now the next idea is that of parent-offspring conflict, which we get from Bob Trivers. A parent in a diploid sexually reproducing species is 50% related to each of its offspring. And that means it would like to invest equally in each of its offspring. However, the offspring is 100% related to itself, it's 50% related to its full sibs, and it's 25% related to half sibs. Therefore, an offspring sh should try to get more investment from its parents than its parents have been selected to give. That's that difference between 100% and 50%. The offspring should seek to force the parental investment upwards until its inclusive fitness, its own fitness, plus what it would get from current or potential siblings, 
is maximized. It doesn't try to take everything, but it tries to take more than the parent wants to give. So parent and offspring are expected to disagree over how long the period of parental investment should be, over the amount of parental investment should be given, and over the altruistic or selfish behavior of offspring towards relatives. Parent-offspring conflict is expected increase during the period of parental care, and offspring are expected to employ both biological and psychological weapons in conflict with their parents. The next step in this train of reasoning came from David Haig, who thought about parent-offspring conflicts in pregnancy. As with a, a, an offspring that's independent, the fetus is selected to extract more from the mother than the mother is selected to give. And we've seen from our study of invasiveness that fetal tissue in the placenta has put in, itself into a position to manipulate maternal physiology, and it can do that by hormone production. That kind of manipulation is easier when the fetal tissue has invaded the maternal tissue in the placenta. And there are two, uh, two main ways of doing that. One is to increase maternal blood pressure. That contains the risk for preeclampsia. And the other is to increase the sugar concentration of maternal blood. That leads to pregnancy-related diabetes. This kind of control is related to genetic imprinting. Genes are imprinted or turned off by methylating the DNA or changing the acetylation pattern in histones. Some genes are imprinted differently in the germline of fathers and mothers. This is called parent of origin or genomic imprinting. Genes imprinted in the germline are not expressed early in fetal development and they are then reprogrammed in the germline of the adult to be appropriate for being either a mother or a father, okay? either a male or a female. There is a connection between kin selection and genomic imprinting. The mother is 50% related to each of her offspring, as we have emphasized, but if she has future offspring with other males, then only this offspring is 50% related to the father. The others will not be related to him at all. Thus, to the degree that mating is polygamous, paternal genes are going to be selected to extract more from the mother than the mother is selected to give, and the, mother, the maternal genes will be selected to resist. So to develop that idea in a bit more detail, what's going on is that the father is turning off genes that downregulate growth. So paternally expressed transcripts enhance growth. There's an interesting double negative here. Let me run through it again. The father is turning off genes that downregulate growth. Paternally expressed transcripts enhance growth. The mother is turning off genes that upregulate growth. So maternally expressed transcripts inhibit growth. The normal state of the embryo is that there is an equilibrium in which both mother and offspring are in reasonably good condition. However, the conflict is revealed when the action taken by one parent is canceled by disrupting the imprinting. In mice, this can be done with, gen with a genetic manipulation, and that produces an increase or decrease of about 10% in birth weight. In humans, we rely on mutations that produce rare diseases. We'll talk more about that later. The idea is well supported for the genes IGF-2 and IGF-2R. This is insulin-like growth factor and its receptor, CDKNIC and GRB10, but it is not yet well supported for other genes that are known to be imprinted by sex of origin. So to summarize, Natural selection acts to increase the frequency of genes, not the survival of individuals. Genes can influence their fate by influencing actions that affect the reproductive success of relatives. Parent and offspring are in conflict over reproductive investment. The offspring is selected to demand more than the parent is selected to give. Maternally and paternally derived genes are in similar conflict within the 
within the offspring, and this seems to explain genomic imprinting, that is, parent of origin imprinting. In both cases, the normal condition is an equilibrium established by an evolutionary tug of war. Disrupting that equilibrium can manifest in unselected pathology.